All right, welcome back to another CSS Grid tutorial. Um, in this project, we are creating a, a full site using CSS Grid as the main layout tool. Um, this uh, video is going to cover the callout section here. Uh, we've already uh, done the navigation, this top hero, and this feature section. Now we're going to focus in on this small uh, kind of callout here. You could use this for marketing purposes, or you could use it uh, to help tell your story. Uh, there's lots of different ways. Uh, it could be a call to action with a little button. Uh, so you see this in many different types of websites as it interrupts the flow of the content. Uh, you can see that there's margin here and here and here and here and now you have this big full width uh, either image or a block of color or a pattern that just kind of stops the eyes the users going down and creates a, something to jump out at them uh, so you want to make sure that your message is strong here because you're using a very strong element. So let's jump into our code. So we have our code here. Uh, you can see our website taking form at this point. And now we have our callout section. So I'm actually going to call this callout. <clears throat> and one thing to note here is that I'm using uh, I'm using class names for these sections. Uh, so if you ever wanted to reuse these sections on a different page or a different uh, section of the website, all you have to do is write the CSS one time. And so if you wanted to add a call out to every single page, then you could use the same uh, CSS properties and values and uh, put those across different pages. It's a, more of a modular style of uh, creating websites. So. Uh, I encourage you to do that whenever you can. That's actually the way the reason CSS classes were made was to create a more modular uh, type of website. So um, <clears throat> in our callout, we're going to have two things. We need a wrapper element, um, which is the main wrapper, so the section. And then I like to do what I like to call an inner. And the reason I do that is the same reason I did it up here. If you remember in our uh, masthead, I did the masthead inner. And the reason is that I want to apply uh, the flexbox styling, the display flex, to this so that I can manipulate any of the text that's on the inside of here. Uh, and if I, if I do, if I have a header and then I have a navigation and I apply flex to here, then what it's going to do is going to put the header and the navigation next to one another instead of, uh, and the same thing with hero inner. So I did that here and I did that here. And instead of, instead of having these two things uh, stack on top of each other, <clears throat> they're going to come and line up next to each other, which is great here, but it's not the thing that I want to do uh, once I get down to something like a call out, because what if I have text? And then I have I want to have a button, or I want to have two lines of text and a button. I want those things to stack vertically. I don't necessarily want them to, uh, at least in this design, I don't want them to be side by side. So uh, I like to add um, an inner in there so that when I put display flex here, there's only one uh, element that's being, one child element that's being flexed. And then when I do uh, my centering, flexbox centering on this call out, then it's only going to center this one big block of content. So that's why I like to create that inner uh, div. And then inside of our callout inner, uh, we're just going to have uh, some text. So let's just do like a, I try to follow the rules here. So we have an H2 up here. So let's do H3. And that's going to be, um, let's just do some laurel mipsum, I guess. Okay, and clean this up a bit. Sometimes the lorem ipsum gets kind of caught. 
in a strange place, so I like to clean it up a little. <clears throat> so let's see. Okay. So we have our H3 here. And we have our Laurel Mipsum text. And then now, uh, I think I'm happy with that. If you look at the design, oh, then it's just some, some text in the middle. And then either a block of color. I'll show you two different ways. I'll show you a block of color. And then I'm going to show you how to put in a background image as well. So let's just start with uh, call out. So I have my I have my CSS section over here, and we'll start with call out, and then that's going to be um, it's a block level element. It's already at 100% wide, so that's not something we necessarily need to worry about. So I'm just going to start with the background color so that we can get something up there. Um, I'm going to start with a color I don't want because so that we can see. Uh, so we can still see the text here. You can see that the background color is here. So it is showing up. And I want the color to be white eventually. So let's just turn this into a nice dark gray. And then what we want to do is I want to give it some padding. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say padding. And what I want the most is the padding on the top and bottom. So Let's start with something like 3 RAM and then 1 RAM on each side. <clears throat> and so this, uh, this side padding is important because whenever it looks good now, but whenever it comes down here, if you don't have that side padding right here, when it bumps up against it, it's not going to be separated. It's going to be up against the side here. So make sure that uh, whenever whenever you come down here that there is some padding uh, along the sides otherwise it's going to be uh, a little bit weird so. um, that doesn't need to be there <clears throat> so now there's just uh, when we get down to a smaller size there's still a little bit of padding there okay. um, and then we need to uh, put display flex on this item and then we'll do our centering which is justify content center align items center okay and then when we get to it you could actually center this uh, h3 or you could center the callout inner as well because you'll see here that this text is not centered so when you get down to a smaller size it's going to be left justified uh, so you probably want to center that text as well. It doesn't look like you can tell here, but it does whenever you come down. Okay, so let's do the uh, call out inner, I believe. Yes. <clears throat> and so we'll do text align center. And so now it centers that text, and you can see it there. Okay, and you can't tell any difference when it gets to a large size, uh, but you can certainly tell here. Um, if you wanted to make changes to the H3 element, um, then you could. Maybe if you wanted to make the font size super big, so if you wanted to do a nice uh, large size uh, font, this is probably about. I don't know. It, yeah, you know, that was at like 1 or 1 1.5. This is 2.5, which is considerably larger. Maybe 2. 2 is better. So you see now you got a nice flow and you're coming down, and then you have this nice bold uh, call out text right in the middle. And uh, that makes for a nice, a nice little call out. And in terms of your color, you know, you're matching you're matching the band here with this. But what if we wanted to add a background? Uh, we want to add the background here, and so we need to, to add it in the same place that we added a background color. Uh, so we would come down, and I'm going to show you a technique that I use uh, for doing an image. Not only a background image, but an image with an overlay over top of it, so that 
it helps the text to pop out a little bit if your text is having some a hard time standing out from the image because the image is busy then this will help your text to stand out with, um, with a little gradient over the background or color so first thing we're going to do I have this image here I like to use this uh, website it's called unsplash.it and what it does it just serves <clears throat> placeholder images from the unsplash.com if you don't know about Unsplash, uh, you should check it out, unsplash.com. And Unsplash, uh, they give you free, really high quality images and huge images for you to be able to use for any project. So graphic design or marketing or blogs or uh, websites or website placeholders. They're really great high quality images uh, that are pretty impressive. So I would encourage you to use those. And then unsplash.it is uh, a service that uh, feeds, <coughs> excuse me, it feeds images to your um, to your website or whatever online space, and it just serves those unsplash images to you. Uh, okay, so that's all we need to do is we need to put in the URL uh, with background, and I'm using background and not background image because I want to layer. Um, a couple of different things here. So whatever you put first is going to be on top when you start to uh, build the layers of your background. And so I like to use the linear gradient property and then you just separate uh, you just separate your different values here um, with the comma. Okay. So I like to use a linear gradient and what this does is the default is um, just like a gradient tool creates a gradient from you know one color up here and then it bleeds down into another color here. So the default is top to bottom uh, which fits uh, for what we want to do because what we want to do is we want to create the same color here as we have here and so that's going to create one solid color in the background but the beauty of the linear gradient is that we can change the opacity. So let's uh, just dive into a color here. I like to do RGBA because then I can get uh, red, green, blue, but I can also get the alpha channel. So that's going to control the opacity of the image. So I like to do uh, black, which is 0, 0, 0. And then we'll just start with something like 0 0.5. I'm not sure <clears throat> if that's going to be too much or too little but it's at least a good starting point. And then I'm going to copy that. And the way that we do linear gradient is we need we need a starting color and we need an ending color. And then they have to be inside of these parentheses here. Sometimes you get a little mess up here, so you need to make sure there's two that that this value here is inside of parentheses and then that these two values are inside of these larger parentheses. Okay? Uh, I'm getting a... <clears throat> okay. For some reason it's messing that part up. What does it need? Does it need some parentheses? Okay. Maybe that's what it needed. All right, sometimes it requires you to put the parentheses in here for the URL. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, I don't always have to worry about that, but I'm having to worry about it here. Uh, let's take this off and see. If that shows, oh, well, thought it was going to be awesome. Let's see if it. If it actually does it, it's still thinking up here. And what it should do is it should apply the background here. Ah. Um, 
And then what we need to do, I'm sorry, I haven't finished out the background uh, part yet. So what we need to do is we need to apply some, some other parameters to the background. So we need to do background position, <clears throat> which we're just going to do center, center. Uh, I may change that in a moment. And then we also need to do uh, background size, which is going to be cover. And then uh, repeat. It's good to have repeat, no repeat. And let's do, instead of center, center, let's do uh, center top. Mm, bottom. So this one uh, covers left and right. This one covers the vertical axis. So if you do something like left, and bottom, it'll take the left bottom part of the image and it'll focus in on the left bottom part of the image. Um, so it's a little bit of playing around because our image is um, our image is big and it's a little bit uh, unwieldy and we just want to make sure that we're showing the, the correct part uh, of the image. So let's do, just do center center and we'll, we'll deal with the alignment of it later. But you can see our background is here <clears throat> and it covers our space. It hasn't fully downloaded yet um, but it covers the space so when our image uh, gets bigger you can see that through the center of the image it starts to scale okay but when it's done uh, like this then we get a nice uh, over the top. Now if we take the linear gradient out of it then you'll see what happens, how it's been uh, changed. So now you can see that this is it uh, with no gradient over the top of the image and it's a little bit more difficult to see the uh, to see what's going on uh, with the text but as soon as I uh, put the gradient over the top of it then the text uh, pops out a little bit more. So that's what we want to do uh, with that particular element. So that's our call out. Uh, you could add a button here like I said and what you would do is just come in uh, to your HTML here and you would come down inside this call out enter and you would create a button and then that button would live uh, right here. So that is how to create our call out section. Uh, in the next video we're going to get down to this is kind of like a, a blog or you would have articles or uh, maybe different categories or content sections uh, that you would display on the home page with a little button to either load more or go to a full blog section, that type of thing. So we will work on that section next and then last we have the footer so we're getting there. Uh, thank you for watching and I appreciate you um, subscribing. If you have not subscribed to the channel there's lots of good stuff about CSS Grid and Flexbox and HTML and CSS I um, also have a MobiRise tutorial, so if you're new to totally new or you want to have a, a fast way to do mock-ups or a fast way to um, <clears throat> just kind of iterate a website at the beginning or you need to show something to a client very quickly, then um, that's a really good uh, tool to use. It's called MobiRise. Um, if you have any questions or comments about this video or CSS Grid or any other uh, videos that I've done, please leave the comments down in the comments section and I will get to them as quickly as I possibly can. Uh, again, I thank you and I'll see you next time.